You are now listening to About That Business, hosted by Rom Wills. Rom Wills is an entrepreneur and personal coach who has helped people reach their fullest potential personally and professionally. Take it away, Rom. Thank you, Marshall. Specialty stores will come back. I'm going to tell you what. I'm looking at this retail apocalypse, y'all. And I'm still seeing a business opportunity. I'm still seeing a business opportunity. Because one of the reasons why these big stores, these big department stores, these big places are actually going out of business, well, other than there's too many of them, a lot of them sell crap, man. <laughs> a lot of them sell crap. If you go in, the, in, in, in any department store, most of the stuff they have are like store brands or a brand that they owned, right? And it's usually like, a, it's all right, but it ain't like great, right? And that's a, that's a big reason why they're going out of business, uh, you know, and they're cutting back stuff. Because it's that, it's store brands. And also, too, you don't need those store brands. They don't mean anything. You see a store, there's no, I don't think there's any store brand that is a, that's a, like, status symbol, right? Like, at my local department store, I usually go up there, I'm looking at the Polo, Ralph Lauren, and stuff like that, which I can go to most any store and find, or even go to an outlet or something and find, right? Which brings me to the point of this podcast. People still want those things, right? People still want the things that are being sold in department stores, like, you know, some of the more general stuff. So it would actually be smarter and actually better to sell it on a small level. You know, I use the example of Ralph Lauren. Actually, and I'm, I wouldn't be surprised to see this where they just say, you know what, it's just better for us if we just have some small shops, set them up all over the place, and go from there. <laughs> Which might, I, and I think, that, I think that's going to happen. I think that's going to happen with a lot of stuff. That way it's more specific. When somebody wants something or needs something, they can go right to it. It's more efficient because I've been in some outlet. If you go in outlet stores, they actually better. They have more stuff because usually when they're selling them in these big stores, these big department stores or something like that, they don't have everything. They they only have what they have enough space for, but they is very limited. Now, if you have some product or something, um, I mean, yeah, you get more exposure, but it's actually better if you have it in a specialty shop. You know, and that could be for anything, like jewelry. Like, uh, like I have a good friend, young young lady, right? You know, I usually go visit. She's a manager at this uh, one store. It's mainly for women, but, you know, I, I chop it up with her. It's actually the same young lady that designed uh, the logo I use, right? And I was just looking at the store. I mean, it was a small place, had jewelry, just stuff for women and stuff, right? I was like, but... They're not complaining about going out of business. Or like the only thing they need is the mall to stay viable because people want to go there. And that's with a lot of stuff. That's with a lot of kiosks. You get a lot of people, they could just got those single items on a kiosk like some um, perfume, sunglasses, or something like that, and they can do very well because it's small. And I think that's what's going to happen because – the thing that I think the one that, that's the biggest thing with the retail apocalypse. That's the biggest thing with these stores. They got useless shit. They got useless shit. You don't need it. You actually do better with something smaller. It's more intimate. Plus, you go in some of these places, you you don't really get any help. You 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 go like walk through the whole place, stay an hour before somebody say hi to you or something like that. But you deal with the specialty shops first of all. I use one prominent specialty shop that already exists, a comic book shop. You go in these shops and a person can, you could actually sell a person better because you can recommend something to them, right? Or the other day, other a couple uh, week or so ago, I had to buy some shoes, right? And I actually had a guy, now I was about to buy some shoes that, you know, they looked all right to me, but, you know. This dude looked at it and said, hold up, let me find you a better pair. He was a salesman. He, he was the manager of the store. And, you know, he was able to give me some personal service. 
right? It's actually better from a customer's service point of view. The smaller ones are better because the people who work in there are going to be no more knowledgeable and they don't have to cover a lot of area, you know, and they can come right there. And you actually, for sales, from a sales perspective, usually if somebody, if you have a small store or a specialty shop, people come in there, they are already predisposed to buying stuff, right? See, one thing, if you go through a department store, these really big stores got a ton of stuff, you're not predisposed to buying. You're just kind of looking around to see what's there. But once you get that smaller shop, you can build it up. Now, I learned that from a bookstore owner. He said, look, you only need 100 people a month to buy stuff, right? And you're good to go. Because one thing, when they, when they come into that shop, and I learned this from the bookstore owner, it's like, yeah, you can sell them better. You can sell the person on this product better, right? And that's going to happen because, for one, I look at a lot of big uh, stores closing. And I mentioned this before that there's a Toys R Us in my area that's closing. And in the uh, little strip mall, it said it's going to have, like, three big spaces. I mean, when I say big space, like, big spaces empty. Like, you could put, like, little mini department stores in there or something. And they're going, to be, they're going to be sitting empty for a while. One of the things that could happen is maybe set it up like a fancy, uh, like a little bit better than uh, like the typical flea market. Because let's be real, most flea markets look jacked up. But maybe set up little small shops, like set up something for like uh, the same style you do in a pop-up shop. Say, you know what, you lease it out to space, just say, look, you got to jazz it up or something. It can't look tacky. I think that's going to make. I think that's going to make a comeback. I think. I think uh, those little small stores, like the mom and pop type of thing, is really going to come back. People thought they were dead, but in fact, I can almost. I'm gonna guarantee it. There's a lot of stuff that we thought didn't work is going to come back and work because it's it's easier. Because these people who rent these places, they going to be like, hold up, we got to make money for it because, you know. You can't really tear down a mall until all the stores are gone in it, right? You can't really do that. So it's like, okay, you got this space. What can we do with it? And, you know, that would be, I think that that's really is going to happen because especially with, uh, especially with automation coming and people losing jobs, more people are going to be selling stuff. In fact, that would be a great business opportunity from one of these big businesses. Because I know some of y'all listen to me on the slide, right? Somebody who owns like some of that big real estate, you know, just go in there, set it up. Set it up so people can have suites and everything or little shops. Maybe do some, uh, learn how to do some advertising and then boom. Shoot, you get a bunch of people who got some visions of doing something. So anyway, right? They're going to make a uh, comeback. So anyway, that's it for today. Hey, if all y'all got something to sell, let's go make that money.